Zombies. Zombies. <laughs> Brains. <laughs> Reapers, what's this good? It's your boy Laser. He's always back with another scary reaction video. He's on the scary content. So I can do laugh you guys right now. Four terrified cases of real zombies. Because there's so many creepy ass zombie videos out there. But that's strange. If you're scary content. He's more scary views features. Smith the left button. You subscribe to the notification bell icon. I also stream every night on Twitch. Go check out the stream. It's fucking amazing. Let's dive straight into this video. Chills. Chills. Number four, Jungle Potions. In 1980, a Haitian man named Clairvius Narcissi approached his sister, Angelina, at a public market. This was the first time she has seen him in 18 years since his death. When she asked him where he had been, he said that he was now a zombie who had returned from the dead. She did not believe him until he is able to tell her his childhood nickname. It really was him after all. This is the amazing true story of her zombie brother. In 1962, Clairvius travels to a local hospital complaining of a fever and body pains. He is examined and sent home. The next day, he was declared dead by two doctors who were trained by US physicians. According to Clairvius, he could hear the doctors as they spoke over his corpse. He could feel the sheet being pulled over his face and he heard his sister crying. It's always these like, these type of areas bro. Those crazy ass diseases always break out in these areas unfortunately. It sucks, I feel so bad for these people man. I mean they're actually, usually these people are actually more happy than we are. But it's like, all these crazy ass outbreaks always be happening in these, uh... Third world countries, bro. Crazy. He was awake the entire time but could not move. Not even during his funeral. Not even during his burial. Not even during his resurrection. That's right, I said resurrection. Sometime after he died, Clairvius was removed from his grave. His captors beat him and made him work at a sugarcane plantation, alongside other zombie slaves who had suffered the same fate. When his captor died years later, the zombie simply walked off the plantation and wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me like he had like a disease that like basically was like is it? It's, it gives me like zombie deer vibes. Like he was still like alive, but like his brain was like rotting. What are you? What are they like being? That's what the zombie deer disease was, right? Like his brain's being eaten or something. Oh fuck it, no. Found his sister. That's Clairvius's account. But here's what really happened. Well, it's true that Clairvius really did believe he was a zombie. He was actually most likely poisoned with a zombie concoction made from dangerous jungle herbs. These herbs lowered his heart rate and made him slip into a coma, which is why the doctors were able to pronounce him dead. After just another reason why I'm I like being healthy, bro. I'm very healthy nowadays. I'm, I'm grateful for my body. I want to get one body. Words, he was dug up by whoever drugged him and forced him into an underground slavery ring. By keeping him constantly drugged up, his captors were able to convince him that he was a zombie for years afterwards and made him work for free. A Harvard professor named Wade Davis was trying to solve this mystery. He enlisted the help of a witch doctor from Haiti who claimed to make a zombie powder. When Wade... <laughs> Look at all this sugar, bro. We all sniff sugar. Don't lie, guys. That's normal, right? I'm kidding. Don't sniff sugar. Gave the powder to another professor so that he could test it on mice. He found that their heart rate slowed down. The main ingredients in this powder was a poisonous puffer fish. This is far from the only story of people being rendered into helpless zombies from rare jungle ingredients. The most popular plant to do this with is called scopolamine otherwise known as devil's breath. It's odorless and tasteless, and when it's crushed into a powder, natives say it can be blown into a person's face to make them do whatever you want them to. It's not uncommon for someone to approach a tourist with a piece of paper that has crushed up devil's breath on it. <laughs> maybe it's on a map and they are pretending to ask for directions, or maybe it's a potent residue on a business card. Whatever the method of delivery, the trick is to get the paper close to someone and blow it up their nose. Apparently, this really works. The 
United States Bureau of Diplomatic Security issued a warning about scopolamine on their official website in 2014. They say you can be rendered unconscious for 24 hours, where you are left in a dreamlike state and obey orders as they are given. In February of this year, two women in Colombia were arrested for using devil's breath to turn their victims into zombies and rob them. <laughs> Nini Johanna Ray Sanchez, 33, and Jenny Rodriguez Velasquez, 29, were two women who would spike the drinks of lonely men in nightclubs and bars. Afterwards, they would take them to an ATM and have them empty out their bank accounts. By the time they were caught, they had used devil's breath to steal over $30,000 from about 30 different victims. Just last year, three people from China were arrested in Paris for turning people into temporary zombies so they could be taken advantage of. They told their victims that inhaling the powder would give them ancient Chinese healing powers, but robbed them. Yeah, sniff this, uh, this powder. Don't worry, there's nothing in it that will harm you. It'll give you ancient powers. Magical powers. You can travel the world by flying. Sniff this powder for me. Don't be shy. <laughs> Well, they were incapacitated instead. They told their zombie slaves to take them home and stole all of their jewelry the along with other valuables. They were finally captured after a person who was one of the victims positively identified them. When authorities searched the hotel room, they found a wide variety of mysterious herbs and substances designed to erase people's minds. Number 3. Surgical Zombies in 1936, a psychiatrist named Walter Freeman performed an experimental new procedure on a human test subject. The patient, Alice Hammett, was a Kansas housewife who suffered from anxiety, insomnia, and depression. Dr. Freeman suggested a certain type of surgery that was designed to prevent excessive emotions by cutting nerves within the brain. It was called a lobotomy. The psychiatrist had studied this procedure while he was living in Portugal and now felt ready to perform one himself. How does no brain damage? How does this not go wrong? Elf. To do this, he drilled holes into Alice's skull and inserted a sharpened stake like medicine. Yeah, this is like the one reason why I can never be like a fucking uh, surgeon or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I can't do shit like that. Fuck no. Medical instrument called a loquitome straight into her not do shit like this. brain, but they observed how she felt much calmer. The process took about an hour and was deemed a success. Freeman went on to perform about 3,500 lobotomies to supposedly cure people of their quote, excessive emotions. Even though only about one third of his lobotomies were considered a success, the medical community began to champion the procedure as a terrific way to cure many mental diseases, and by a success, Freeman meant that they were only able to leave the hospital on their own. Most of them weren't able to do so. Instead, they were left completely zombified or else died. Later on, Freeman developed a new and allegedly improved style of lobotomy that used an ice pick instead of a lachetome. This method was called the transorbital lobotomy, and it took less than 10 minutes to perform. For this procedure, Freeman strategically jabbed certain parts of the brain by going underneath the eye with an ice pick. Before any of the this was done. Fuck. What the hell? And the preferred method was not any type of general anesthesia, but rather to deliver electrical shocks to a person's head until they were too stunned to feel anything. Ice pick lobotomies left a person with two black eyes, but they never lost their sight because of the angle that the ice pick was inserted did not harm the eye itself. The actual result of the operation, however, varied considerably. Sometimes a person was left completely unchanged but other times they were left without a personality at all. That is, if they didn't die of shock or from infection, many people had been effectively turned into zombies. Despite its low success rate, lobotomies were highly popular because there were no other ways to treat mental illness. At one point in the 1930s, it was even recommended as a cure-all from anything from tension to quote, crying spells. This was all scientifically acceptable information that actually ran in an article for the New York Times without any dispute at the time. From 1949 to 1952, What you doing, buddy? Ugh. During the height of its popularity, around 50- you, you got some, uh, you wiping some mustard off your shirt? 50,000 Americans became the victim of a lobotomy. Sometime during the 50s, the zombie-making procedure became far less frequent 
As the first wave of antipsychotic medications hit the market, still, Freeman refused to drop the surgery and opted to simply change his marketing approach instead. Dr. Freeman continued to convince people to get lobotomies well into the 50s, now advertising them as the perfect preventative measure for keeping future mental illness at bay. He made it sound like lobotomies were a routine procedure that couldn't do much harm. One of his later victims was a 12-year-old boy named Howard Dully. When Howard did an interview with NPR in 2006 about the procedure, the 56-year-old emotionless bus driver his eyes, oh my god. Driver, quote unquote, wondered if something's missing from my soul. The exact number of zombies that have been created from Freeman's lobotomies is unknown but it is definitely in the thousands. Number 2. Toxic Mold and Parasites Zombies exist all throughout nature. You don't have to look very far to find them. Cordyceps is a common variety of fungus that grows everywhere from forests to valleys. What is that? Oh my god, for being pancake! And reproduces by creating its- It's just a pancake being cooked, you guys, don't worry. This is how my pancakes be looking. I can't even do- I can't even cook a pancake. This is disgusting. What am I looking at? It looks like my mucus. <laughs> Very own zombie army. The cordyceps start out as a spe- It looks like that- It looks like that, uh, like, amoeba. Amoeba, whatever the fuck it's called. That micro-eating, whatever the fuck you call it. Special type of mold spore that lays dormant on the forest floor. When a hungry insect comes by and eats the spore, it becomes an infected kid. Barrier. The fungus takes over the bug's central nervous system using poisonous chemicals and basically makes it act completely insane. The poor bug is technically kept alive, but it has absolutely no control over its own motor skills. As a result, the infected move in jerky and spastic motions that look like the undead. It looks so bad that other insects can sense something is wrong with the zombie bug and tend to stay away. If it's an ant, for example... It's pretty much when like, the parasite gets in the fucking... Uh, insect. Kind of like the zombie snail shit. You see the zombie snail, bro? They're, like, their eyes are being hematized. Like, ooh, 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 like, scary as shit. And other ants will carry it far away to protect the rest of the colony. As the infection worsens, the fun- Also, I always wondered, like, what- I think that's, like, the scariest thing about ants, bro. Their hairs. Oh, my God. Kind of gives me Tesco hair vibes, you know? It looks just like my Tesco hair. Scary. Fungus makes the zombie stagger up a tall plant. When it reaches the top, the zombie bug is made to bite onto a leaf so that it won't fall off. With its hose fastened securely in place, the infection ramps up and covers them in a fuzzy white mold as they die. The fungus eats their body and eventually a long stem bursts out of the back of their head where it continues to grow longer and longer for almost a month straight. By the end of all of this, the dead body has evolved into an alien flower with a strange bulb. It shoots spores into the air to infect countless other insects and begins the process of new- No way, this is, is this like real? Am I looking at- is this real? Or is this like CGI? Here's the bizarre twist. The cordyceps is fast evolving. There are already thousands of different types of the fungus, and each one will only go after one type of insect in particular, while leaving everybody else alone. With this in mind, is it so far-fetched to think that the fungus could eventually evolve to the point where it could Cheetos. start to affect small mammals? Maybe beginning with bats and birds at first, but eventually moving on to larger prey, like humans? It could only be a matter of time. There's already a parasitic worm out there that basically does the same thing, and it can also affect humans too. The liver fluke is a type of flatworm that swims around in the water until it finds a very common type of snail to infect. As the infected snail goes about its life, it leaves behind a slime trail which ants find irresistible. The only problem is that the slime trail is infested with thousands of tiny liver fluke eggs. So when the ants eat the slime, they become infected too. Whereas cordyceps infected ants are very easy for other insects to spot, the liver fluke can live silently inside of its host for a long time without presenting any symptoms. This way, the liver fluke lets the host infest the entire colony. The craziest thing about the liver fluke though is- Look at this. What the fuck? Oh my god. Nasty. It's how advanced its mind control methods are. Once enough ants are infected, the parasites turn them all into zombies at once and force them to climb onto the very top of the tallest nearby plant, just like the cordyceps does. However, there's no mold involved this time. Instead, the ants remain frozen in place 
waiting to be eaten by large herbivores like goats and cows so that the liver fluke can go on to its next phase. The parasite actually has the ability to turn the ant into a zombie on and off at will. When liver flukes sense a large animal is near, they make the ants stop what they are doing and rush to the top of a plant. They are even smart enough to choose brightly colored plants that are more likely to draw the animal's attention. When no animals are around, the liver flukes will let the ant workers go about their normal business and forage for food. This way, the liver fluke ensures that it can live long enough to find a new host. Once the ants do get eaten, just imagine being turned into a plant, bro. Imagine your body just being turned into a plant, what the fuck? Eaten by a larger animal, the fluke worm goes to work eating its new host from the inside out. It gnaws away at its liver and makes it go way deeper into the body to lay more eggs. After a period of months, Shit. the eggs mix with fecal matter and are pushed through the intestines. If the animal defecates near the water, the eggs hatch and they go to find more snails to infect. Here's where you come in. Humans are commonly infected by liver flukes by eating. So this could happen to eating freshwater plants. Another shit can happen when you eat too much like fish too. That's why I gotta be careful on sushi, bro. I don't want to just wipe my ass one day and I pull out a giant fucking tapeworm. You see all these cases about how fuckers eat too much sushi, too much uh, sushi, and they pull out like tapeworms. Disgusting. Such as raw watercress by washing vegetables with contaminated water or by drinking contaminated water themselves. Once inside, the fluke worms eat their way through the human liver just as with any other larger host. At least, that's the way things are for now. How much longer will it take before the liver fluke figures out how to move a little further up the human body, say, into their brain? This could easily be the first way for us to become infected zombies ourselves. Number 1. Bath Salts In late May of 2012, 31-year-old Rudy Eugene got in an argument with his girlfriend on a Friday night. By Saturday, he would be a zombie. At 2 in the morning, Rudy's girlfriend told police that he was rummaging around through their clothing in a panic. He said that he was going to a friend's house. Four hours later, he invited his friend to come with him to the Urban Beach Weekend, a Miami Beach event where 200,000 people celebrate Miami. Memorial Day all weekend long. His friend had to work, so Rudy headed out on his own. When Rudy Miami. His purple sedan broke down later that morning, he decided to abandon his vehicle and get to the party on foot. Rudy became very hot and decided to take his clothing off as he walked across the highway. Even his driver's license was left behind. When he reached the end of an exit ramp, he paused under a shady underpass to rest. There, a 68-year-old homeless man looked back at him. Rudy was completely naked at this point when he went into his zombie rage. First, he rolled the homeless man into the sidewalk and started stripping the Miami. Seems about Miami to me. Clothing off him. After landing a flurry of punches, Rudy dragged the total stranger further down the sidewalk and attacked him some more. Then he leaned over and sank his teeth into the man's face. After a few minutes, a witness named Larry Vega passed by on a bicycle. He shouted at Rudy to get off, but quote, the guy just kept eating the other guy away, like ripping his skin. Larry even compared the attack to something out of the Walking Dead television series. Multiple witnesses saw the attack and dialed 911 while the man continued to be eaten alive in front of them. When a Miami police officer arrived at the scene, Rudy raised his head and growled at him with chunks of flesh between his teeth. He then ignored all of the officer's ah. warnings and went back to chewing the old man's face off some more. Zombies. Zombies. <laughs> Pranks. Don't lie, guys. We all just be walking, bro, down the our downtown city, bro. We see a zombie right come for our brains. <laughs> Even after the officer shot Rudy once, he wouldn't stop eating the body before him, just like a zombie. It took three shots to keep him down for good. When toxicologists examined Rudy's body, they couldn't find any traces of bath salts as expected. Bath salts are sold as soothing bathing products, but they can be smoked or even injected to mimic the effects of an intense speed high. Still, as the Florida director of toxicology, Bruce Goldberger puts it, there are thousands of possible chemicals that could be used in bath salts, and they only tested Rudy's body for the most popular ones. Therefore, he could still have been under the influence of bath salts. 
Early reports also showed indigested pills in his stomach. Weird. At the same time, Rudy's girlfriend insists that either voodoo or a forced drugging had to have taken place. She said that Rudy feared God and would never act this way on his own. How you the fear homeless God, man, man whose name God is great, man. If I if I make it, it's gonna be because of God. It was Robert Popo was completely devoured from his chin to his forehead. He amazingly survived, although he is now missing nearly all of his facial features as well as his sight. Before you go, I wanted to it? tell you. Well, guys, this, is it, this video. I hope you enjoyed. It's one of those terrifying cases of zombies was most interesting. You know? If you enjoy the scary content, these more scary videos and features and to do. I'll see you next one. Peace. Extended arch money.